Tech news is great, but you can have too much of a good thing. And that's Computex. <laughs> First off, Intel. They showed off their much hyped Core i7-8086K limited edition CPU, and it's basically an 8700K that can boost to five gigahertz. So it's cool, but don't get your knickers in a twist over it. What you do have my permission to knicker twist over is Intel's 28 core processor running at five gigahertz. While that's certainly impressive, a number of astute observers at Computex got a peek at the actual system Intel was using, and it appears to be a Xeon Platinum 8180 server processor with an unlocked multiplayer. Multiplier. And it was running so hot they needed a full on AC unit to cool the thing. So maybe this was just a janky way for them to demo 28 cores at five gigahertz, but at the very least, it's kind of sketchy Intel. If you were attempting to show up AMD, it didn't, didn't quite work, sorry. Indeed, it was AMD that was doing the showing up as they showed off a 32 core second gen Threadripper CPU built using 12 nanometer Zen Plus architecture. But they didn't stop there, they also unveiled the world's first seven nanometer GPU with 32 gigs of HBM memory, which will launch later this year as part of the Radeon Instinct line aimed at professionals and AI use cases. Later, it will also come in a gaming focus package, so don't worry about that. Also, there's a Radeon Vega 56 Nano, which was rumored for a while leading up to Computex, but more importantly, AMD is also using a seven nanometer process in its Zen 2 processors, which are in labs right now. The first chips will be server-oriented Epic models launching next year. Well, if we were going by pure newsworthy announcement, it looks like AMD takes the cake today, but will that cake run once you bring it home and plug it in? You never know. You never know with you cakes. You don't know with AMD cakes. Some cakes run and some cakes don't. And I thought ASUS was done on Monday, but they just kept rolling, announcing the ZenBook Pro 15 with an Intel Movidius visual processing unit for AI stuff, and the screen pad, a touchscreen trackpad, which I'm sure will be useful in, in some way. No one asked for this. No, we didn't. <laughs> The ZenBook S is a fancy looking yet durable notebook that raises the keyboard up when it's opened. The Zen AIO Pro is an all-in-one with built-in Qi charging and the Vivo Watch BP is the first smartwatch to measure blood pressure, which almost excuses it's looking like a badly poured pancake. Like when you pour pancake mixture on the, on the grill and it kind of looks, it doesn't- How can you pour bad? It just, it looks weird. Asus actually had one more big thingy announced, but first, it's Quick Bits, brought to you by our t-shirts and stuff. You can't get this t-shirt anymore, so that's kind of unfortunate. It was a limited edition, but if you're partial to our awesome logo, which I love, click the link down below to get tech-linked shirts, hoodies, stickers, and a sense of belonging you never quite had with any other fast and silly tech news show. Don't worry, we got you. All right, quick bits time. Dual screen notebooks are apparently the next big thing. Lenovo's second gen yoga book and Asus's Project Precog both ditched the keyboard and trackpad for another touchscreen, and Intel is also working on a smaller handheld dual screen device codenamed Tiger Rapids. Asus offering will even move the keyboard around depending on where your fingers are, which I'm sure will be super helpful and not irritating at all, like me. You're great. Hey, great rally. that was a dig at me? Qualcomm Snapdragon 835 already powers some Windows 2-in-1s, but the new Snapdragon 850 is specifically intended for such devices with some specific enhancements tailored for Windows 10. Samsung will launch a Snapdragon-powered Windows device later this year, whether or not anyone cares. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Cooler Master's Inception project achieved its goal of building the biggest water-cooled PC ever, and looks like it did so with the help of $100,000. Dollars can be very helpful for these kind of things. Rocket has debuted, debuted? Come on. Rocket has debuted their own custom switch, the Titan, inside of their new super cool looking Vulcan mechanical keyboard. Titan switches are apparently tactile, but quiet, sort of like Cherry MX Browns or Play-Doh but will it be as tasty as Play-Doh? Can't decide between a mini tower or a full tower for your next PC build? Get you a case that can do both. With the Rio Toro Morpheus, which can transform between the two size standards, it can be just as fickle and indecisive as you. That's rude. And Microsoft has sunk a data center off the coast of Scotland as part of Project Natick, an initiative to cut electricity costs by using the ocean as cooling, and not because they thought that's a normal thing to do with data centers. Usually water is bad for computers. You sound salty. Guys, that's it for this episode, and actually you won't see me around for the next few weeks. I'm actually going 
Duh! I'm going to China to make food videos. What? Yeah, that's crazy. The rest of the team will be keeping TechLink going until I get back in July, so don't worry, you'll get your fill of tech news. To make sure that happens, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell icon, and it'll be time for more tech news before you even know it.